a professor and his worst student journey to the center of the earth, only to discover another world ruled by powerful beings. In the Welsh hills, people celebrate the maiden voyage of the Iron Mole, a ship designed for exploring beneath the earth's surface. Professor of Geological Engineering Dr. Abner Perry designed the Iron Mole and is joined by his former student and the ship's financier, David Innes. A journalist approaches them, so David proudly states that Abner once nominated him as his worst student, and Abner confirms that he was a slow student. Soon, the men head up the ladder and into the ship. Following Abner's guidance, David initiates the launch sequence, and the Iron Mole begins to burrow through the mountainside. As their journey progresses, the intense heat turns the cockpit's walls red, while the men struggle. Soon, Abner loses consciousness due to the heat, while David hits his head due to the turbulence, thus knocking him out. When they wake up, they realize that the ship has gone cold, which the professor thinks is impossible. Soon, they crash and lose power. David suggests exploring outside, and oddly, they find lush greenery, overgrown vines, and large trees surrounding them. As they look up, they see that the sky is purple. Abner consults his compass and sees that it doesn't work, hinting that they're no longer on Earth but at its core. A colossal bird-like creature suddenly approaches them, but Abner's curiosity gets the better of him, so he moves toward it. David notes the animal's aggressiveness and restrains him. They flee, but the professor isn't a good runner, so David boosts the old man up a tree before finding his own hiding spot. The plan backfires as the bird starts shaking the tree to make Abner fall. David then grabs a branch and hits the bird's shin to distract it. As the bird turns its attention to David, he runs away but falls into quicksand. Just as the creature draws closer, spears rain from the trees and a rope lands near David thrown by a group of monkey-like beings. Abner also gets cornered by the beings, and soon, they're shackled and taken to a group of humans. Among them is a woman who catches David's eye. They learn that the woman's name is Dia, and the man in front of her is Gak. Another prisoner keeps glancing back at them, so Dia warns that the man, Huja, isn't to be trusted. Two days after, David checks his pocket watch, noting that the place has never gone dark despite the day's passing. Abner hypothesizes the whole place is a giant cave, while the purple sky is just a roof, and the purple color is due to magma above it. David puts the watch to his ear, but one of their captors snatches it. This upsets him because the watch was his father's. Dia then explains to them that the monkey men are Sagoths, soldiers for another race called the Mehars, who are the rulers of Pelucidar. The group is being taken to the city to become workers. Suddenly, Huja grabs Dia, and David defends her and beats him to the ground. Afterward, Dia looks on in displeasure, and Gak takes her away. David is bewildered, and Abner comments dryly that his action wasn't appreciated. As they press forward, a monster captures one of the prisoners. With his wrists chained to the others, the rest struggle to free themselves until one of the Sagoths breaks the chain. Soon, the humans are taken into a dark cave, where the professor starts growing weak from exhaustion. Eventually, the group reaches a stopping point, but David realizes that Dia is missing. Gak explains that she escaped with Huja, informing David that he insulted Dia by not claiming her after winning her from their fight as their tradition requires. He recounts that Dia fled to the hills to avoid a man named Jubal, who wanted to claim her. However, the Sagoths captured her. He also reveals that Dia is a princess, but it's doubtful they would ever see her again, as they're as good as dead. The group is abruptly ordered to continue their journey. They enter a passageway that opens into a cavern with magma falling into a fire pit. The Sagoths operate a mechanism that closes the bottom like a drawbridge, allowing the group to pass safely. Past the fire pit, the cramped tunnel opens into a large cavern where their captors remove their shackles. In front of them are towering rock formations where the Mehars, rulers of the city, stand. The Mehars seem to be appraising the prisoners, and one locks eyes with the Sagoth. With only a few blinks to communicate, the soldiers follow their master's orders and separate two women from the group, then place Abner and two other men on another side. Finally, the unchosen prisoners are herded to one side. When the topmost Mehar raises its wings, the prisoners are sent to their designations. David and the unchosen ones are sent to a forge for manual labor, whereas Abner is assigned as a scribe. He soon learns to read and write in the Pelucidar's language, and transcribes text for the Mehar. The script describes the Mehars as beings who communicate using telepathy. Later, Abner shares with David his theory that the Mehar's power is connected to the flowing lava, which also destroys the city. This is why they're needed to repair the city constantly. Sagoths barge in, and they drag prisoners to a room needing emergency repairs. In the chaos, David sees an opportunity to attack a Sagoth and escape. 
He then runs to the entrance and closes the gates behind him, leaving the others behind. As he escapes, David ends up in the fire pit room, so he searches for an alternative path. Luckily, he discovers a crevice that leads into a cramped passageway. Exhausted, David musters his remaining strength upon seeing the tunnel's end. He stumbles out of the cave and into a clearing, where he spots a campfire and some edible roots roasting on a spear. After devouring the roots, David is attacked by Ra. A struggle ensues and they tumble into the den of carnivorous plants. The men exchange blows until the tendrils engulf Ra. Acting quickly, David cuts the constricting tendrils and frees the man. This allows the two men to become fast friends. Ra looks at David's peculiar clothing, prompting him to explain that he's not from Pelucidar and he just escaped the city. He asks why the humans haven't revolted, so Ra explains that the Mayhars are too powerful. He urges Ra to band together and overthrow the Mayhar. The man scoffs and promises to make the foreigner understand the magnitude of their plight. They scale the city's outer walls, and Ra takes David to the edge of a cliff. Below is a circular chamber surrounded by fire with four captive women at its center. As the Mayhars begin to stir, one of them locks eyes with one woman, who then turns around and kneels. Perched at the highest point of the structure, a white Mayhar spreads its wings and swoops down to take the kneeling woman. Meanwhile, the other Mayhars start choosing their own victims, causing panic and chaos among the women as they try to avoid being taken. Ra gets up to leave, but David, overwhelmed by anger, picks up a rock to throw at the creatures. However, Ra intervenes, causing David to fall and injuring his head and shoulder. Thankfully, the Mayhars are in a deep sleep after their feeding frenzy. Ra points to an escape route, and David barely squeezes through the sleeping Mayhars and out to safety. They meet outside, and David declares that he'll destroy the Mayhars. Ra questions how one man can do it, and he responds that he will learn their secret and use it against them. Inspired, Ra decides to help the bold foreigner. However, as they retrace their steps through the tunnel, the Sagoths capture them. The two are brought before the Mayhar and the other prisoners. Ra is chained to a stone pillar, while David is handed a spear. A Mayhar summons a creature for David to fight, so Ra advises him to aim behind its ear. However, due to its size and strength, David struggles to do so. The creature soon manages to bite a spear, breaking it. It then charges toward David, who positions himself next to the creature's neck. David stabs the creature behind the eyes, where its ear should be, and it falls to its side, defeated. Abner celebrates his victory, but one of the Mayhars attacks. Ra manages to break free from his chains and swings them at the oncoming Mayhar, knocking it down and strangling the creature. Seeing this, the prisoners start to riot. They push towards nearby exits while the Sagoths try to contain the stampede. Amid the commotion, Ra and Gok slip away through the secret tunnel. Abner guides David through a separate tunnel that he claims will reveal the Mayhar secret. Meanwhile, the crowd is in chaos as the fire pit blocks their path. As they navigate through the crevice, Abner comments how embarrassing it would have been if David had saved him before he could find the secret. David is pleasantly surprised by Abner's confidence in his return. They reach the end and find the inner sanctum, which is filled with lava and sagoths. At the center of the room is a white pot filled with burning liquid, which Abner explains is the origin of the Mayhar. He also points to the mechanism that controls the fire pit. David realizes that this room will play a critical role in the Mayhar's fall. They soon leave the city through the secret tunnel and find their way out. David then hands Abner his axe before taking a moment to enjoy the fresh air. Just then, Dia appears, chased by Huja. David runs towards them, but Huja threatens to kill her. The commotion attracts a fire-breathing frog, causing Huja to run away while David protects Dia. Arrow suddenly whizzes through the air, hitting the frog. David watches as his old professor, now armed with a bow, fires several arrows until the beast is defeated. David is reunited with Dia at last, so he tries to reconcile with her, but she ignores him. Abner instructs David to be more assertive, so he sits her down. Instead, Dia expresses her fear that Huja will lead Jubal to them, who will kill David. David sits down in pain, which concerns Dia. At that moment, David kisses her and declares that he's not scared of Jubal. The three regroup, and Abner excitedly explains that he fashioned his new bow and arrow using whatever materials he could find. While passing through a thicket, the trio cross paths with Jubal and Huja. Although Dia urges them to hide, David decides to confront the warrior alone. With javelins in hand, Jubal and Huja stand ready as David emerges from the thicket. Abner and Dia watch as Jubal hurls a javelin, narrowly missing David's head. Armed with his axe, David approaches the large man, who is now armed with a bladed spear. The battle between David and Jubal begins. Jubal splits David's weapon, leaving him disarmed. David trips and falls backward, so his opponent delivers an overhead strike but narrowly misses. 
During this, Hucha circles around to take Dia, so Abner aims his arrow at him. The fight continues, and David uses a log against his enemy, making Jubal fall onto a patch of exploding mushrooms. David grabs the discarded javelin and runs into the smoke. Moments later, Jubal staggers into view with David's weapon in his stomach before falling to the ground, lifeless. The sight of his fallen ally causes Huja to flee. As David regroups with the others, Ra and Gak also arrive, shocked to see that Jubal is dead. Gak confirms that with Jubal's defeat, Dia is now David's. Meanwhile, in the Mehar's cavern, the Sagoths are called to prepare for war. Soon, in a human village, Abner teaches archery to the tribesmen. Ra rallies the leaders and notes how their tribes have always been divided. However, their foreign guests have encouraged them to join arms and overthrow the Mehars, so the crowd cheers. Later, David outlines their plan of attack, unaware that Huja is spying on them. David announces that he will lead the main force while Gak and his archers provide cover. Abner and Rao will sneak into the inner sanctum to sabotage the fire pit so the rebels can enter the city. Moments later, Dian notices Huja leaving through the trees. Determined to find out what he's up to, she runs after him. Eventually, David and his troops enter the main cave entrance while Gak and his archers stay behind. Abner and Ra head for the secret tunnel, unaware that Huja is stalking them with Dia close behind. Suddenly, Sagoths appear and capture Huja. Seeing this, Dia meets with Abner and Ra to warn them that Huja has been captured, so he might divulge their plans to their enemies. Still, they continue to the fire pit room, but Sagoths ambush them. The two are captured, while Ra narrowly escapes and runs for the inner sanctum. Deep in the cave, David and his troops are on the other side of the fire pit and see that it's safe to cross. As they cross, however, the drawbridge is opened and most of the troops are left behind as fire erupts, leaving David with only a few soldiers. The Mehar then ordered the Sagoths to attack, pinning the rebels against the fiery waterfall. Meanwhile, Ra lifts the gate blocking the inner sanctum, where more Sagoths confront him. The first Sagoth is knocked out with a single punch, while another tries to stab Ra with a spear. After a struggle, Ra seizes the weapon and spears the soldier. At the fire pit, David and his troops fend off the soldiers, so the Mehars order reinforcements to join the fight. In the inner sanctum, Ra turns his attention to the fire pit's mechanism, but a soldier throws its knife at his back. Despite this, Ra releases the mechanism and dispatches the remaining Sagoths. With their path clear, the rest of David's men join the battle. Realizing that Ra aims to destroy their power source, the Mehars command the surviving Sagoth to stop him. Despite his injuries, Ray moves towards the pulley that controls the lava flow, but the soldier grasps his leg, preventing him from reaching it. Meanwhile, Abner and Dia are bound and taken to the fiery chamber, where the Mayhars hypnotize them. Finally, knocking out the tenacious Sagoth, Ra grabs the pulley, sending a torrent of lava to flood the room. The Mayhars sense the danger and start to panic. David reaches the chamber where Dia and Abner are, just as the gate closes. The Mayhars control Dia, and she moves towards the flames while David and his men try to break down the gate. Luckily, the gate breaks open just as Dia reaches the edge of the fire while Gak and his forces crest the outer walls to take up positions overlooking the fiery chamber. As rebels and soldiers clash, a Mayhar swoops down to capture the mesmerized Dia, but archers shoot it down. David then uses a hastily constructed wooden walkway to pass through the flames and reach Dia. Another Mayhar attempts to attack, but the archers also shoot it down. The human rebels start shooting at the remaining Mayhars, causing them to fall one after another. The white pot in the inner sanctum soon explodes, thus rendering the Mayhars powerless. Finally, Dia and Abner regain consciousness, just as the last Mayhar launches its attack. Seeing this, a rebel tosses David a spear, allowing him to stab it in the stomach and throw the creature into the flames. As the rebels flee the chamber, the explosions continue, threatening to collapse the entire cave system. While making their way out, David luckily comes across the dead body of the Sagoth who stole his father's watch and reclaims it. Unfortunately, Ra falls to his death as the walls crumble behind him. Somewhere in the city, Huja is able to escape when a blast kills both of his captors. Eventually, however, an explosion buries him alive. Now safely outside, David calls out for Ra, but as the cave entrance erupts in flames, he realizes it's too late to wait for him. Later, Abner, David, and Dia watch the city crumble in a series of explosions. They mourn for Ra before returning to the village. Amidst the celebrations of the tribesmen, Abner and David prepare to leave Pelucidar. David invites Dia to the surface to be his wife, but she tearfully refuses since her place is in Pelucidar. She professes her love for him, and they share a final farewell kiss. She then kisses his father's watch and returns it to David before disappearing into the crowd. David climbs into the iron mole and sits there, stunned at Dia's refusal. 
Abner steps in from his stupor, and they depart for the surface. Dia watches as the ship drills its way through the side of a mountain and disappears with the man she loves. Soon, the Iron Mole emerges in front of the White House, surprising the guards. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.